to do no more kisses. off my cream bro no I don't want it no no I don't want it <laughs> I don't want it I don't want it there you go alright we'll play another so this is we're on chapter 4 now we'll, we'll go through this because this is just like a short scene Get the four best foot forward. On the day of the garden party, you and Briar stand by the window watching the servants finish setting up the large white tents and tables in the yard. My father certainly spared no offense. Can you believe this entire party is for you? There's even a duke coming. That's only one step below the prince brigand. The duke will be interesting to meet. After how much my grandmother has been boosting about him, I can't wait to finally meet him. You will have to tell me all about it tonight. Just then, your bedroom door flies open. The Dowage Countess enters, taking in your appearance. Oh, God. Lady Grandmother. I wanted to catch you before the party. I have a few surprises for you. Since this is your introduction to all the local nobility and the Duke of Killington, it is of the utmost importance to impress today. And so, I had the tailor create a dress befitting such an occasion, Miss Daly, as you'll fetch it from the wardrobe. Briar nods and pulls out a pink lace dress with an asthmus necklace. You run your hands across the dedicated the, the fabric. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm sure you'll leave everyone speechless, speechless today. Speechless, sorry. And catch the eye of a certain someone, perhaps? Well, it doesn't hurt to try it on, at least. I don't have the diamonds for it, so I can't. Fuck me, man. It's a nice dress, but I'm content with what I have. Very well, if you insist. Come along, then. There's one more thing. 
You head downstairs, following your grandmother closely as she prepares you for the day's festival. Festivities. Besides the normal gossip and introductions, there will be of course, there will of course be music and dancing and games. The two of you suddenly come to a stop at the bottom of the stairs. Miss Parsons stands in the foyer, dancing and humming to herself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Miss Parsons. I should. Oh, fiddlesticks, that was Lady Edgewater, really clear, I beg a thousand pardons. It's no matter, you're quite light on your feet. I've been, I've so been looking forward to this all week. I simply adore any chance I get for cotillions, waltz. I only wish I could dance the entire night. Alas, the musicians eventually leave. I'm much more familiar with simple country dances than your fashionable waltz and cotillions. Which is why I asked Miss Parsons here early today, so she can give you a few lessons. It'll be so much fun. I can teach you the bolanger today, and then later there's this new dance called the quadrille. I hear it is very popular in London this season and all the way from France. That does sound enticing. I also had Woods pick you up a pair of dancing shoes just for the occasion. The dad and can't. Countess quickly retrieved the shoes from the drawing room. You turned them over in your hand. Oh my. Wow, the stitching is so exquisite. If I had the stuff, I would. It's a generous offer, but I don't need any extra lessons. My current knowledge will suffice. So be it. Don't let her force you into anything. We can enjoy the party much longer now. You decide not to acquire the dancing shoes. If I had the diamonds, I probably would. You walk across the estate lawns towards the greenhouse where large white tents and tables decorate the area. You turn around slowly, watching people playing games and chatting. Oh my, so incredible. Across the lawn, you know as Mr. McAllister. 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 Mercaster and Miss Sutton play skittles. They take turns rolling a small ball down an alleyway attempting to hit wooden pins. No, I was sure that would be a strike. My aim was perfect. Apparently it wasn't. Perhaps you can get a spare. As you continue to watch, Mr. Woods approaches and offers you a variety of small cakes on a silver platter. Lady Claire, care for any refreshments? Certainly, they look, these look delicious, Mr. Woods. How are you enjoying yourself today? Very well, but you, but should you really be talking to someone of my position, my lady? Why wouldn't I? Mr. Woods, you're a great match for Miss Dot, for Miss Dally. That's very kind of you to say, but there's no way she would care for someone like me. That's rubbish. I've known Miss Dally my entire life. You two are perfect for each other. Of course you're wasting your time talking with a servant. Fuck you, bitch. I will talk to anybody I want. Shut your bitch ass move up. This bitch. You look over and see the Countess approach. Your father trailing close behind her. Mr. Woods bows curtly and moves on to the next group of guests. But I suppose you can hide your brutes only so much. Fuck off, bitch. At least. I'm friendly to everyone. Is more than that can be said for some people. And unlike some other people, I care about my reputation. And it's much to the fuck up. I believe that's enough, Henrietta. Let Claire enjoy her party. For real. The Kansas scuffs and stomps off to watch Mr. Marcaster and Miss Sutton skein. Your father wraps an arm around your shoulders and smiles. My darling Claire, there are so many guests to meet. Over there are the Parsons of Hazelvale Manor. Those are the Bowmans, the Andersons. How on earth do you remember all of these names? My mother drilled me endlessly when I was younger. Your father laughs as you stop next to a familiar nobleman. And this is Mr. Sinclair, a live for Park. I believe you two will get along quite well. My lord, I must correct you. I already had the pleasure of meeting Lady Claire when she arrived to Edgewater. Well, well, you must forgive this old earl. I seem to have fallen behind the times. Mr. Sinclair. You look dashing as always, I see. Oh, I... 
Mr. Sinclair cleared his throat, regaining his composure. He noticed his cheeks turn a faint red. You look decent today. Decent? I believe I guess witnessed a Mr. Sinclair compliment. Coming from you, that is a rare find indeed. Perhaps, my lady, I am not so free with my compliments, because I would prefer the words to hold their value. It's easy to give it praises on every whim, but that dilutes their worth. Mrs. Sinclair takes a step toward you, his gaze never wavering from yours. However, when I get compliments, you can be certain that I truly mean every word. Your father looked between the two of you, smiling to himself. Sinclair, are you looking forward to the London season? I hear you believe him was in this week. So soon? And here I was getting used to your company. You're not attending the season? You sound disappointed, sir. But alas, no. I won't be in town. It won't be proper for someone of my status and birthright to attend. Although, I confess I'm not entirely sure what makes the season so special. Well, many young ladies make their debut in society and try to find a decent marriage prospect. Prospect, sorry. And there are also a lot of dinners, balls, parties, including at Mr. Sinclair's townhouse. His dinners are always a great success. So I'm told, if only there weren't such a such a tor torture to host. Come now, perhaps there are a few new faces this year who could make it more lively. Mrs. Sinclair's eyes flicker to you. If you don't care for it, why host one at all? I'm certain, certainly not going to be the Sinclair to break tradition, even if I'm not keen on social engagements. Perhaps you can use today to practice. If only you open yourself up more, perhaps the dread of social interaction would become more tolerable. Easy for you to say, it's apparent you have no qualms about interacting with strangers. Some of us are not so fortunate. Have you considered that it's because I practice that I don't have those same fears? It would do you wonder, sir. My lady, you. Well, it seems I'm unneeded in this conversation. I should take my leave. Wait, what? But, my lord, I enjoy you too. The earl waves off your inter interjections and goes to watch Mr. Marcaster and Miss Sutenskeen, leaving you alone with Mr. Sinclair. You and Mrs. Mrs. Sinclair lock eyes, but both quickly look away. So, attend many garden parties? A few, but only for people I respect. I see it in your respect, my father. That should not even be a question. The Earl of Edgewater has been very generous to my family over the years. When I became master at Ledford Park, he helped me with the estate business. Where, it, if not, if not from him, I don't know that the Sinclairs would still own the property. He's a great man. I'm pleased I am not the only one who sees him that way. Are the festivities to your liking today, Mr. Sinclair? Or let me guess, you find them simply adequate. You presume to know my character so easily, my lady. Not at all. I'm simply attempting to figure out the puzzle that is Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair takes a stick closer, keeping his eyes locked on yours. And what have you determined thus far? You mimic his stride, challenging him with a smirk. Sir, I cannot allow you to know all my secrets. Where is the fun in that? Just then you hear a loud cry across the lawn. Miss Sutton jumps up and down next to the game of Skittles. That was a strike! A strike, Mr. Madcaster. Did you see it? Yes, I am not blind. Did you play Skittles? 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 Lady Claire. I cannot say I have. Oh, well, I would ask you to a match, but you couldn't possibly keep up. Afraid to lose to a novice player? Hardly. I doubt someone at your level could defeat me. I never lost before. But perhaps you care to prove me wrong? <coughs> Great showing towards Mr. Sinclair meeting his gaze fully. I don't have to prove myself to you. Besides, I wouldn't dare risk damaging your fragile dignity. <laughs> you moved to rush past Mr. Sinclair, but the dowry can't calls to you across the lawn. My dear Lady Claire, there you are. Your grandmother approaches you, Mr. Sinclair, and you notice an old gentleman tr trailing closer behind her. 
I would like to formally introduce you to Duke Tristan Bridges or Killington. How do you do, Lady Claire? Duke Richards kisses your hand intensely, insistently, sorry, not letting go. Ever since I heard of your arrival, I have been counting the moments until our first encounter. Your Grace. That with Kansas has certainly talked. I can only hope that my charms and dashing good looks do not disappoint. No, but in fact, for years they have sung glorious tales of my heroic deeds and handsomeness. This fucking guy, man. Uh uh, I don't like this guy already. The dude pulls you closer, smiling and gristly at Mr. Sinclair. What are you? Lady Claire, you shouldn't waste your tongue among the common folk like Mr. Sinclair here, not when you are worthy of so much more. But perhaps he told you tales of my greatness? What greatness do you prefer to, Your Grace? I was under the impression that all those tales were merely fiction. If you think hard enough, sir, I'm sure something will come to mind. Tell me, how is Liver Park anyway? I haven't seen it since. And better than last, you left it, Your Grace. If you'll forgive me, Lady Claire, that was Lady Edgewater, Duke Richards. What was that about? Mr. Sinclair has never been overly fond of me. I think he's jealous. There's plenty to be envious of. Your title, fortune, good reputation. Ah, yeah, poor Mr. Sinclair. He always wants everything I have. I pity the man, honestly. But let us speak of something happier. Perhaps I can tell you more about myself. Your Grace. By all means, go ahead. I would certainly appreciate the opportunity to learn more about you. Then let me tell you my life story. I was born in the year of our Lord, 1765, at the Kalington Estate. Oh, God. Of course, that's when I was proclaimed Duke Christian Richards of Carlington. But I realized it was an incomplete life without. And then I realized I must meet you. And here we are. The Duke runs his fingers lightly along your arm before you pull away. That was quite the story, Your Grace. Next to you, your grandmother shakes her head, pulling herself out of the daze. Yes, quite the story, although I couldn't pay attention after the first ten minutes of it. Alas, our time must be cut short. I must discuss some business with your father. Until we meet again, fair Lady Claire. The Duke kisses your hand once more and leads you with your grandmother. She eyes you carefully. Well, what do you think of our dear Duke Richards? He's quite attentive. Which is an excellent quality. He's a prime e example of good breeding. But you'll have plenty of time today to see that. Uh, I don't know about that. Lady during the party. You and Miss Parsons stroll around the edges of the party together, noting the various groups. Don't look now, but Duke Richards is staring at you. I don't know if I should be jealous or happy for you. Why not both? You slyly glance over at the Duke across the lawn. He locks eyes with you and grins widely. He's cle clearly taking a fancy to you. So it would seem my grandmother will be enthralled by the news. Lady Clear, he's coming this way. I guess I can't seem to get away from him. Quick, let's hide somewhere. You see Duke Richards take a few steps in your direction. You look around for a place to go. The greenhouse. You take Miss Parsons' hands and lead her behind the greenhouse. The two of you turn to each other, bursting into laughter. That was so close, I thought he would catch us for sure. Psh! Never. I couldn't allow you to be stuck with him talking and talking all afternoon. You are much better company. I, at least, don't only talk about myself. For real. You peek around the corner and catch the dude looking around the lawn. Lady Claire, I see you want to play hide and seek. Where did you run off to? You turn back to Miss Parsons, attempting to stifle your laughter. Well, he's very captive, captivated by you. A little too much, as you ask me. I don't think he's leaving any time soon. We could always make this a bit more interesting. The Edgewater Lake isn't too far from away, and we'd be away from prying eyes. Plus, I'm going away to London in a few days for the season. We have to make the most of our time together. I don't have any diamonds for it. My father threw this in my honor. I feel 
obligated to remain here. Besides, I'm related to Vegwalder. I should be able to talk to any nobleman, even when they're self-assorted prigs. Prigs, I think she meant to say. Two of you get when we join the party together. You know, this couple's heading towards the dance floor as the musicians start a new song. Miss Parsons gasps beside you. Oh my goodness, finally some dancing. Sounds like the Bolanger. I don't know that one. You'll learn on the go. It's very simple to pick up. Not very, f not much footwork involved. We just need to find you a partner. I have just the person in mind. You look around the party. Mr. Sinclair. You saw the up to Mr. Sinclair watching the gathering couples. Mr. Sinclair. Lady Claire. Will you not ask me to dance? Admiring the couples, I see. What? I... Don't try to deny it. I caught you already. Mr. Sinclair smirks and turns towards you. He bows politely and extends his hand. My lady, will you do me the honor of the, of the first dance? Indeed, I will. So kind of you to ask. You take his hand as he escorts you onto the dance floor. Nothing. No Linda Duke's hardened expression as you pass. Oof. The two of you join a group with Miss Sutton and Mr. Merkester. As the music begins, you curtsy to Mr. Sinclair and he bow to you in return. Oh, isn't this marvelous? I love the Belanger. The group forms a large circle and then start turning to the left and change the direction. You smoothly move with the flow of the group to the right. So far, so good. The cir the large circle breaks apart, each couple spinning around their partner. I'm surprised, Mrs. Sinclair. I thought you have some kind of comment to make. Is con conversation required? I should think it would make the dance most more enjoyable at the very least. There's only so much that can be said presently. Then by all means, go ahead and say it. Before Mrs. Sinclair can respond, you change partners in the circle. Mr. McAllister reaches for your hand. Grab his hand. You take your stepbrother's hand and move across the circle. Perhaps you're not a complete and buried from after all. How kind of you to know this. As all the couples dance with the other partners, you can feel Mr. Sinclair's gaze still upon you from across the circle. Your eyes land upon Mr. Sinclair and you catch a faint smile. Oh, Mr. Sinclair makes his way back to your side and the group bends to the left again. You chat with Mr. Sinclair to your right. Since you won't make an effort for a conversation, I will. Do you have a favorite dance, Mr. Sinclair? One that I don't have to participate in. But you're so late on your feet. It's all thanks to years of practice. Soon enough, the dance comes to an end and the entire party applauds. Mr. Sinclair bows respectfully to you. Thank you, Lady Claire, for granting me this dance. If I may so, you are a decent dancer, my lady. Room for improvement, yes, but still decent. I'm simply glad you find me more than tolerable. Before the next dance begins, your father cleans the glass and a hush falls over the crowd. If I may have everyone's attention, I wish to say a few words. The past year has been tough, laughed my son, Harry, but in that sorrow, happiness was found in my newly discovered daughter, Lady Claire. We have not known each other long, but yet in this short time, I already see Edgewater holds a special place in her heart. Her love for these lands rem reminds me of my own. You made Edgewater feel like home to me, father. My darling girl, I know I was not present for your childhood, but I would like to make it up. Your father looks directly at you, smiling. In front of God and everyone here as my witness, i like to announce that I have rewritten my will. When I pass, and I hope that will be many years from now, the Edgewater estate and this title will fall to Lady Claire of Edgewater. You're the new Harris to the Edgewater estate. That would make me an Harris. Father, I don't deserve such an honor. Nonsense, Claire. I hoped for this when I sent for you, but I knew the odds were good that you would prove unsuitable. The Countess slides up behind your father and hisses in his ear. And she has. Your father ignores the Countess as he takes your hand in his. 
Since our first meeting, you have proven over and over that you are my blood and the rightful heir to Edgewater. Thank you, Father. I hope to do credit to you and the family. The Countess turns to the crowd, smiling between clenched teeth. My apologies, everyone. My husband simply thought this would be a funny joke. This is no joke, my lady. It's something best to discuss in private. Or do you disagree, my lord? As the crowd begins to despair, you know Mr. Castor standing next to you, sighing heavily. I, I thought each water might be mine. Oh, Mr. McCaster. I know you were hoping for more. I appreciate your concern, but you had no idea what I'm feeling. While well, your father pulls you aside, speaking to you quietly. Before you get carried away, there's a stipulation in the will I have to make. Um, oh no, of course, it's too good to be true. What's the catch? It's nothing dreadful, but in order to inherit a child, you must marry someone of suitable rank. What? It's the only way to ensure the estate will be safe in yours. And to help you out, you'll make your debut this London season. You'll leave in a few days' time. Hovering nearby, Countess Sinbrita Scowl turns into a twisted smile. Hmm. Next time on the Siren Decorum, as the new Harris stage while their state London calls, will it be a smooth journey or will there be unexpected bumps along the way? Oh god. Why? Yeah, sure, why not? Load up. Beep. <clears throat> All right, guys. I'm gonna stop this video here, and then I'm gonna do another chapter of this after. As always, stay safe and take care. See you all later. Bye bye.